personally, I can't believe I saw in a post recently, you did a bodybuilding competition. So what, what was the whole like purpose of that? And like, why'd you even like think about doing that? I did. Yes. Um, literally I have a very extremely long bucket list and like, I love being able to check those things yep. off. Like I have yep. like a legit bucket list. Like it's not just something sitting in my head. It's something that I've had written down. Um, since I was basically like since I grad or since I started college, really. So it's been like 12 plus years, but, um, wow. I look back on it in like November ish. Um, just cause I like do like a monthly check-in, like what, what's next? What can I like check off the list? You know, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is travel based. Like one of my bucket list items is like to travel to a hundred different countries. So like every yep, time I remember that, yeah. I'm looking at it. So, um, I was just scrolling through it and I was like, you know what? I was like, bodybuilding has been on there, like a bodybuilding show, a weightlifting comp. Um, and I'm like, you know what? Let's do bodybuilding. I'm in between grid and um, I'm not doing, I have no desire really to do Wadapalooza or any big CrossFit comp. I'm like in between seasons. I was like, let's give bodybuilding a, a go. It's been sitting there stagnant for 12 years. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, let's give it a go. So I started like the, the training for it in December and then January, I really like, hit nutrition and training and like went full dive into the whole entire process. So yeah, nobody knew I was doing it. And that was the whole purpose. Like I never shared stories. I never told yep. like the only people that really knew were like the people that are at the gym. Like, why are you doing this all of a sudden? Like, where's your, where's your Metcons at? And I'm, so I'm just training for something different, trying something new. So yeah, I did it. It was fun. Got that checked off the list. Nice. So did you, uh, you got a, you got a medal too. So did you, what did, what did you place? I did. So in, okay. So how does it go? So there's divisions and then there's yep. classes within your division. Mm -hmm. So much stuff. Um, so I got first in my class, but then I got second in the division. Okay. So it's like, it's like the division's kind of like the overall kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so technically I, I qualified for nationals. Um, is I guess what they call it. I, I'm yeah. not doing it. That's in like, a month or so. So I'm not going to do that, but it's a cool thing to say I qualified for a national bodybuilding competition. <laughs> yeah. So, so would you, since you won that and like kind of second overall, is there another, since you crossed that off your check for your bucket list, is the IFBB pro kind of coming up next for, for this, or are you just, is it like, this is just the one and done thing? You know, it, it was a one and done thing when I came into it, but I'm not counting it off that I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. um, the IFBB pro. So what happens is like, I guess when you go to nationals and if you make a certain place or something like that is when you get your pro card. Yep. Um, but because nationals is so close to like the beginning of the grid season starting, I'm, I'm grid no. kind of top priority. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. So like how, how was the whole process? Obviously nutrition's different. And so were you still doing like cross kind of like not Metcon workouts, but like kind of CrossFit ish workouts to kind of get ready for this competition? Um, no, um, I actually steered clear from all like Metcon stuff, um, stuck to the plan extremely to a T up until like the last few weeks, I started adding a couple more Metcons because I also pushed myself to do a CrossFit competition <laughs> two weeks prior to the bodybuilding show. So I was like, maybe yeah. I should get condition make sure my conditioning and my gymnastics is still up to par. Um, so no, I kind of avoided CrossFit stuff at all costs. It was also like a good timing because, I mean, I've just been doing CrossFit for so long, like all the compounding movements, like, you know, you get older, my knees are achy, my neck's achy, like all my joints, like one issue, like leads to another as far as like had a wrist injury, then it like slowly started moving up to my elbow and my shoulder. So it was like, everything was like naggy. Yep. So perfect timing because, and, and I actually learned a lot about bodybuilding. I loved training bodybuilding. Um, a lot of my aches and pains went away throughout the process. So that was huge just because I wasn't doing all the compounding kind of movement. Um, but yeah, I went full dive into bodybuilding up until that last couple of weeks of just that CrossFit competition really was like, okay, maybe I should try just make sure I still have, <laughs> maybe make sure it can move for 10 minutes, you know, without <laughs> blowing a lung out. But yeah. yeah so, great. so how, how hard it was, how hard was it towards the end to just to get to, the body that you were at, they were aiming for, for that competition. I, cause I know obviously diet, then you have to restrict yourself a little bit to get thinner and like looking more lean. And so was that like, was that painful for you or like, how, how was that for you, for the whole experience? 
nutrition was definitely the hardest part, which I'm sure it is for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you are restricted on calories, but everything I was eating, I didn't feel like I was like starving myself, like most people kind of assume or yeah. perceive from the outside. Yep. Um, everything I was eating was just like low caloric food. So even though it was like a lot of chicken and lettuce and stuff, I was eating like large amounts of it. So I, I wasn't starving necessarily. Um, towards the end of it, um, I actually didn't know this until I have like a full on like 10 day plan that I followed and my carbs did get really low. Um, I did get really weak, like about three weeks before the show, just because my cars were so, like, my legs felt really weird. Like even just walking, like I was weak, but, um, yeah, I lost 20 pounds and I didn't, think I, had, I didn't think I had 20 pounds to lose. So I lost a full 20 pounds and 10% body fat in a mere three, just barely over three months. So it was like, it was really, it was a weird feeling. It was weak, but it was only my legs. Like I could still crush like my upper body workouts, but like my, my lip, like my squatting and my strength in my legs definitely felt like it dwindled. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. it was fine. Um, they're back and good to go now, but yeah, that last last week you actually like high carb. So I went from like 90 grams of carbs to like 250 grams of carbs. So that Dang, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it was painful. It was, I like pain, right? That's what makes you grow. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole process, honestly. Yeah. It's like a new experience. It's like yeah. something like, you know, you're not used to, you know, yeah. obviously once you get accustomed to certain things all the time, then you're just like, just, it's like mundane. And then like, if you try something new, it's more exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Except for, I will be honest. Um, the day of the show, like you train so hard for this. And then it's like, it, it is a very, how do I anticlimactic experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not performing. Right. It's not like you've been training for this and then like something could go wrong. Like, no, you just stand there and flex. And I'm like, okay. Like, so I wasn't even nervous. Cause there's nothing like I've done what I can do. Right. There's yeah. nothing. There's no error at this point, really. Yep. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a little anticlimactic at the end, but the process leading up to it was fun for sure. Yeah. Now, now I'm wearing a t-shirt that says quad God. So I, I don't think I'm the quad God. I think you're the quad goddess. So, um, <laughs> so I know, I know you have a large, larger quad. So were you kind of worried about that going into the competition or like, what was, what were some of the things that you noticed on your body that you're like, uh, maybe I should just like trim this down a little bit to to make it to make me look good in the competition not that i'm saying you didn't look good but honestly i don't know shit about bodybuilding like there's bikini which obviously you're really skinny there's figure which goes into a little bit more muscular and then physique which gets a little bit more muscular so as yeah. far as like and i actually had someone ask me this question like what is the one part of your body I'm like i don't care <laughs> like i don't care like i'm doing this as a bucket list item i don't care if my one quad is a little bit bigger than my other one or my calves aren't the size they should be like it's not i'm following it to a t doing the best I can. So like, I didn't body shame myself at all. Um, what is funny though, is like going into the bodybuilding show, everyone's like, are you doing wellness? Because well, uh, wellness category is all like quad and glute focus for the main part. And then mm, you, okay. you want to be super muscular on the lower half and then not quite as muscular on the upper half, I guess. Um, I didn't do wellness, but every, like every single person was like your wellness, right? Just cause my quads are just so prominent. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as that, like I wasn't going to body shame myself or tell me my arms didn't look good enough or match my legs or any of that. So I was good with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you looked, I mean, I'm a married man, but you did look great on the show. So it's like, I, I was like, this is, I mean, you definitely fit, fit the part on some of those pictures on Instagram that you have. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>